Good morning and welcome to Lutheran Church of Our Savior as we gather for worship this beautiful Sunday. The only announcements I have for you, I have two of them. One is to remind you that Bible study continues to meet on Wednesday mornings. We gather in the fellowship hall so that we can maintain healthy social distancing. And we continue to ask you, especially if you are not vaccinated, to wear a mask for that. I also invite you to hold our students in prayer as they returned to school this week. And this is a difficult time for both parents and students as we keep an eye on what's happening with COVID in our community. With that, I invite you to settle in and prepare yourself for worship as we listen to Marlin's Prelude. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices 
and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert, and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, 
so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones who did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. He sa and he said, For this reason I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with them. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. Today, boys and girls, is one of my kind of favorite lessons from the Gospel to talk where we talk to children about because the, the disciples Jesus says that if we eat his flesh and drink his blood we live in him and the di disciples say well that doesn't make sense how do we I, I, how are we supposed to accept that and here's what I know I know that you child of God have the gift of faith that says that teaches me that when I hand you communion and I say to you, the body and blood of Christ, you know that that's what you're getting. Adults look at that and go, it's a wafer, it's a sip. You know that it's Jesus. And your faith helps us to have our faith. So I want to thank you for the faith that you have. I want to thank you for trusting Jesus. And I want to tell you that when the day comes that you say, how can I accept this? Jesus is still there, even when you're having a hard time accepting. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for the promise that you are in us and with us, and more importantly, that we are in you. Amen. The steadfast love of God, the life of Jesus Christ, and the growth of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Amen. Today we conclude a four-part series from the Gospel according to St. John concerning Jesus revealing himself as the true bread that came down from heaven. Over the past few weeks, we have heard Jesus refer to the crowd of people gathered before him by three names, the Jews, his disciples, and the twelve. Now we know the twelve were that small group of individuals personally selected by Jesus to follow him and learn from his actions. Those referred to as his disciples in today's reading were a number of people, including the twelve, who heard Jesus speak and saw him perform many miracles. Some members of this group wished to make Jesus king of Israel and drive out the Romans. 
and those mentioned as the Jews were most likely the religious leaders from Jerusalem. All of these people apparently were present when Jesus fed a crowd of over 5,000 with just two fish and five barley loaves. The same group later caught up with Jesus in the synagogue in Capernaum. In our gospel reading today, those called the Jews did not believe that Jesus was the living bread that came down from heaven. They knew his parents, Mary and Joseph, and so they were turned off by anything he said or did. Those called his disciples were disgusted by Jesus declaring that if you do not munch on his flesh and guzzle down his blood, you do not have life within you. They found this saying too hard to accept. They found this teaching too difficult to acknowledge. And many of them were offended by such a notion. And so we are told in today's reading, after this, many of his disciples drew back, returned to their old associations, and no longer accompanied him. Following this reaction, Jesus turned to his selected group of 12 and asked them, Do you also wish to go away? Do you also desire to leave me? It is now that we hear those impressive words of St. Peter on behalf of the rest of this chosen group, words that we often sing during our liturgy just before the gospel is proclaimed. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. These 12 individuals had come to believe and know that Jesus is the Holy One of God, God's anointed one, the Christ, the Messiah. They knew the true message of eternal life could only be received through Christ Jesus. Returning to Peter's question, to whom shall we go? This was the same question my wife Beth and I asked ourselves and others when our son Jason was born back in 2005. To whom shall we go for child care? To whom shall we go for baby supplies? To whom shall we go for pediatric guidance? And when we moved to Greenville County, South Carolina back in November of 2019, Again, we ask the question, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go for medical help? To whom shall we go for automotive repairs? To whom shall we go for hardware needs? Throughout human existence, mortals continue to ask this question. To whom shall we go? But when it comes to finding the answer to this question pertaining to eternal life, there is only one place to go, to Jesus Christ. It is he and he alone who has the words of eternal life. It is he and he alone who proclaims a true message of life eternal. If we wish to learn about everlasting existence, the place to turn is to Christ Jesus, the Holy One of God. Now, even though the sayings of Jesus can sometimes be hard to understand, this group of 12 were dedicated to remain with Christ. They believed in him. They trusted in him. They had faith in him. No one else could take the place of Jesus in their lives. And when it comes to discerning our eternal existence, the only place to go is to Jesus. It is through faith that God the Father draws us to Christ. We experience this when we study the Holy Scriptures. We experience this through song, prayer, word, and sacrament when we attend worship services. We experience this when we gather together and help one another, following Christ's example of sharing our time, talents, and treasures. Jesus Christ is our bread of life. Jesus Christ is our cup of salvation. Jesus Christ is our Redeemer. 
Jesus Christ is the true vine, the way, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. In our first reading appointed for today, Joshua tells his people, Choose this day whom you will serve. And then he goes on to say, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Many years ago, Bob Dylan had out a song titled, You Got to Serve Somebody. And in this song, Bob sang, You Got to Serve Somebody. It might be the devil, or it might be the Lord, but you got to serve somebody. Who is it that we serve? To whom is it that we have committed our lives? To whom is it that we go to hear the words of eternal life? Martin Luther said, all that is required of us is simply a believing heart. Brothers and sisters, ours is a God who chooses us, forgives us, and loves us. Where else can we go? When we follow Jesus, yes, his teachings may sometimes offend us. But we also know he gives us the words of eternal life. It is our Heavenly Father who invites us and gives us the grace to follow Jesus, even through the hard sayings. So don't brush aside or resist these hard sayings of Jesus, but come together, pray, and discuss what their meanings may be. And as we do so, we will grow in faith. Believe as Peter did, that Jesus can change our lives because he indeed has the words of eternal life. Pray to the Lord to increase our faith that we might grow in our relationship with him and in the knowledge of his love for us. Come share in the Eucharistic meal. Come share in all of Jesus' life, his ministry, his suffering and death, his joyous resurrection, and his promise of eternal life. Come partake of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Created, creating a strong bond between Jesus and his believers, which contains within it the promise of new and everlasting life. Come, munch on his flesh and guzzle down his blood. Consume Jesus Christ, who truly is the living bread which came down from heaven. Amen.
of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of creation, bless fields and orchards. Protect the land from drought and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Lord, this week we pray especially for the people of Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of compassion, Bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open us to their cries. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life such as new job, new school, or new community, especially Madison Scott as she settles into college. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the death of their beloved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.